going to sing for you a song called Murphy Can Never Go Home. And it was written by a very talented uh, Irish uh, singer and songwriter, Mick Curry, who has written uh, some memorable songs indeed, uh, one of them being Lawless, which was performed a lot by Christy Moore, the great singer from County Kildare, and the other, 2000 Years After Jesus. Um, again, a striking song I associated with the singing in America of my great friend, uh, Donny Carroll. And Murphy Can Never Go Home is written about um, I suppose the later stages in life of people who worked uh, as migrant workers, I suppose you would call them Irishmen, working in London, uh, back at a time when the Irish were very much second class citizens uh, in, in England. Uh, and well, why am I attracted to this song? I always have to ask myself, why does the song appeal to me? It's because at one brief period in my life, back in 1964, when I was a student at University College Dublin, I had experience for one whole summer of working uh, in construction in London. Uh, I got a scholarship from, from Limerick County Council to go to university. I was very fortunate. It was not really very common at that time for people from rural Ireland to go to university in Dublin. Uh, and I got a scholarship and was able to go. Uh, but it wasn't enough really to survive for the whole year. And many of us would head off uh, in the summer times to England uh, and get jobs or maybe even two jobs uh, and make up enough money to, to tide us over for the coming year. I ended up going to London for the first time, walking the streets of Shepherd's Bush in London, which was a very Irish area at that time, and seeing various signs for employment up. And the job I ended up with was for the Lovell Construction Company. It's, it's a very reputable construction company, still exists to this day. And I picked it over uh, the companies that most Irish um, uh, immigrants were in, in England were working for, McAlpines and Wimpies, and the most notorious of the ball for hard work, Murphy's. Uh, run by a, a Kerry man in London. Uh, and I, I, I ended up with a job, leaving at 7 a.m. every morning and, and uh, being carried out to Hillingdon uh, in London, to Hillingdon Hospital, which was under reconstruction at the time. And it was hard work, pick and shovel, and, uh, and uh, there were no jackhammers involved, even though there was a lot of breaking of concrete. Uh, it was mostly sledgehammers because you couldn't disturb the patients in the adjacent wards. And I spent four months working there and uh, as, as you would say, it made a man out of me. It was very hard work, but uh, I got used to it. And the pay was very good, about 20 pounds a week at that time, which was big money for, for Irish people in, 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 uh, in England. Um, I knew when I was saying goodbye to the people uh, after the summer that I'd probably never see them again. And when you're that young, you don't reflect that much about the future typically. But I knew at some level that the story was not going to be good for some of them. They drank uh, a lot, too much. Um, they were always in debt, um, getting advanced wages. And uh, some of them lived in, in uh, you know, very, very substandard housing, DOS houses that were called, six to a room. And it didn't seem there was anything in, in, in the near future going to change that. But well, spending the talk forward, I remember uh, one of my trips back from America, I went with the late Frank Hart to see a play called The Kings of the Kilburn High Road. And it was about those kinds of people later on in their life. Uh, and a lot of them had uh, burned the bridges as it were, uh, had nowhere to go. Uh, they had lost touch with their families back in Ireland and uh, they, some of them didn't have families at all, never had married. Uh, and uh, at the same time, they were in kind of a, uh, denial about the situation. That, in general, was what the play was about. And I, I, myself and Frank left it with tears running down our faces. It was a powerful play and very, very moving. And when I heard this song of Mick Curry's, I wanted to, 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 to learn it right away. And uh, I did, but I actually never sang it in public. This is my first time ever doing so. And uh, I associated with singers like Joni Carroll, uh, who has done it uh, out in the Sunnyside Folk Club. Uh, out there several times. But this is my, my first venture into it. Uh, I love the song uh, and I'm going to have Hayley Richardson join me in North Carolina. Hayley is an amazing young woman. Uh, she's very, very busy. She's taking a college degree remotely, of course, these days. 
and doing all sorts of projects with various friends of hers, video projects. She's an immensely talented uh, young violin or fiddle player. Uh, but she always finds time whenever I call her up and say, will you play on this or will you play on that, Haley?" And she's agreed to play on this. So with Haley Richardson in North Carolina, I'm going to be singing uh, Mick Curry's great song, Murphy Can Never Go Home. It's a hell of an age When a man's ill at ease Feels his heart in a rage Makes him weak at the knees When he sees things are changing And he's marking time His workmates all twenty And he's past his prime And he longs to go back home to Ireland For he's tired of the crack And the living it rough And he's twenty-four years And the buildings that taught him that when you have nothing, then you've had enough. So he sits at the bar, and he smokes a cigar, and he boasts how he's never alone. Ah, but I know he's lying, his big heart is breaking, Murphy can never go home. And he reads in the papers, of the economic miracles wrought by the Yanks and the sons of Japan. Building the blocks of the 21st century, what use of they for a labouring man? Once hard men were heroes and now they are fools, and all the old values uprooted and gone. When he woke up he found that they changed all the rules, but there's nothing to do but keep laboring on. So he sits at the bar, and he smokes his cigar, and he boasts of he's never alone. Ah, but I know he's lying, his big heart is breaking, for he can never go home. And it's a long rocky road that led him to Birmingham long in the making and no going back. With the writing no letters to friends or relations, no family at all for to help him keep track. Now he sits in the bar in no hurry at all, for there's nobody waiting but old father time. And when the last rays of sunshine go down on the brown, a song from his childhood then comes to his mind. So he sits at the bar, and he smokes his cigar, and he boasts of he's never alone. Ah, but I know he's lying, his big heart is breaking. 